You cannot honestly be that naive. You think I'd marry that non-subscriber? Ha! You must be out of your freaking mind. Cardi Kaizoku. This video is sponsored by Card Market, Europe's largest online marketplace for trading card games. This video is sponsored by Sleeve Cheap. Use code CardKaizoku for 5% off your order. Market review time. Now with OP07 data, I haven't done one of these in a hot minute. So just as a refresher, what is the market review dashboard? It is a dashboard I created. I scraped the data. I built out the dashboard. I coded everything myself. It scrapes TCG player price data, and I have card market data in there too. But the main focus is TCG player data. And yeah, we'll just look at what has been added since... OP07 released, we'll look at OP07 performance and non-OP07 cards as well. And then we'll also calculate the value of an OP07 booster box to see if it's worth it to pick it up at these uh, scalpish prices, right? At secondhand prices, not MSRP. And then if you do want access to this dashboard, I grant access to it. It's accessible via browser. If you're a marketeer patron on my Patreon, so check that out if you want to peruse this dashboard at your leisure. But yeah, let's just jump right into things. Looking at the movers for the period of June 28th to July 6th. So June 28th is when OP07 launched, released. So why not use that as a jumping off point for this analysis here? So the biggest increases in that period of about like a week. Is it a week? Yeah, actually it's like exactly a week. So Shanks went up 64 bucks, Manga Shanks. Manga Chopper also up 19 and then Treasure Rare Nami went up $13. This card was like... Free falling from 100 down to 50, it looks like, and now it's going back up again. Alt art Kaku also up because Luchi is the new hotness now. 07 Luchi, 10 bucks for the alt art. Also Zoro because of Bonnie. Nine cause Zoro up nine bucks. Cavendish alt art also up 28 to 36 because of Bonnie also getting really popular. I think Bonnie got fifth and sixth at one of the recent 07 online regionals. Or was it online? It was somewhere not in America. That's all I remember. And then it cost cut the kuri also up because Enel is top dog. It won that regionals that I mentioned earlier. So a lot cheaper than he used to be. He used to be like $80, $90, but he's going back up slowly from 51 to 58. The alternative of that nine cost Zoro also up six bucks. Hody also up because of Bonnie Cavendish too. Yeah, like kind of every Bonnie card went up five bucks ish minimum. Perona leader also up three bucks. Perona is Kind of like a fringe meta deck at the moment. Sometimes she shows up, sometimes she doesn't. We also see blue Doflamingo cards from the uh, blue Doflamingo Copers. So Prona up three bucks, Ten Cost Kaido up three bucks, the alt arts of both. Oh, this is the box topper one. There's no alt art for the one cost Prona, is there? But yeah, Doflamingo players seeing some hope that other people are not able to see. So we'll let them do their thing. And then Ten Cost Luffy also up two bucks, the alt art. Secret Rare from 05. Brook also up slightly a bit. EB01. Normal Brook, not the Alt Art. Normal Hody also up 2 bucks. The Alt Art Nami from 01 also up. Uh, she used to be like 300 bucks at some point, now she's 173. Let's take a look at the history here. This is the feature of my dashboard, by the way. I have data. Going back to October 2023. Yeah, so October like 15, 2023 to now. She started at 180, so not too different from where she is now. And then climb like crazy her peak was like 385 386 almost 400 dollars in february and since then has uh completely crashed off the face of the earth going down to 170 ish were there oh one reprints that happened recently i guess like around june mid-june i guess there were i wasn't following the market too closely these days but my dashboard's still working behind the scenes even if i don't personally actively follow the market so yeah nami is now more affordable than she was when i first started recording data and falling into parity with card market prices card market is 145 ish euros if you convert euros to us dollars it's probably like equal but yeah this is not a 4x trading channel so i won't calculate it for you you can look it up yourself borsalino also up two bucks yeah luchi staples here borsalino sabo gecko moria here's kaido for doflamingo so all of these increases actually line up with like meta performance for once sometimes it's kind of random but we see some Reiju cards too. A dollar for the seven cost Ichiji. But yeah, everything else is like Enel, Red Purple Law, Bonnie, and so on and so forth. Let's take a look at the biggest decreases of this period. 
So Manga Luffy down $150. It's still nearly a $4,000 card, just a little less close to $4,000 than he used to be. Oda Sign Luffy also down $115, so getting further away from that $2,000 mark. Manga Zoro down, Manga Soga King down, Manga Kid down. So a lot of other mangas went down while the uh, Shanks and Chopper went up. Oh, this is that PSA Luffy. So it starts off at about $250 ish if, if it released at the same time as 07 did, and now it's dropped $37. So right now, hovering around $210 if you want to pick up a copy. I guess it's because like anyone could get this if they were uh, subscribed to PSA. I didn't, by the way. But I do like this card art. So I don't know. Maybe I'll have to pick it up somehow separately. Or if you guys want to donate it to me, I'm just kidding. I shouldn't <laughs> beg for stuff from my fans. That is uncool. Okay, red green Luffy also down $37. 07 deflation. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there was like some big reprint that happened in 01 because a lot of the inflated 01 cards went down. Or is it because of that premium booster reprint set coming not soon? Was this one of the cards that were in that set? That could be it too, right? Because there's um in Japan at, at the middle of July, there's going to be a premium booster set releasing that has a lot of reprints of a, a lot of old staples with new art by the way like a bunch of variations of art but that's not gonna reach us until like i think winter or fall probably winter but yeah we see a lot of oh one staples go down doflamingo also down 20 bucks here manga ace down 20 bucks katakuri down altart mr 2 down oh my god he's under 100 now even though it's technically like a nami card so yeah sub 100 nami card nice O oh, one down, O oh, one down, O oh, one down, uh, O oh, two Nami down to fourteen bucks. A lot of like pretty significant decreases for these old staples, which is good if you're trying to collect, right? This is like the perfect time to fill out your collection. The Green Law down, just O oh, one stuff, O oh, two stuff, O oh, three stuff. Yeah, just uh, discounts all around. So let's take a look at O oh, seven only, right? Because I excluded it for now. Let's O oh, seven. So of course we're expecting to see a lot of decreases because it was release prices and then a week later release prices are usually really inflated and then it normalizes after that so most everything is going to be a decrease so what would be interesting is what increased in that period so right off the bat we have uh, 10 cost secret rare ace the base art version went up six dollars because enel got first at that regional so this makes sense to me that ace went up instead of going down like every other card in the set did uh foxy porsche or alt art Porsche. <laughs> I see Foxy right next to her, so I said his name out loud. But yeah, Porsche went up, and so did Foxy, two eighty three and a dollar each, respectively. Um, hmm, what could this be for? Just could be Foxy being a popular archetype, deck archetype. I don't know. Porsche is used in the Reiju deck pretty well, so that could be why it's a little bit more. Jinbei also up eighty three cents. The alt art, so Jinbei managed to keep his value. That's pretty nice. So did Frankie used in the Enel deck. Makes sense. Secret Rare Sabo also up 18 cents, but still under 20 bucks, so that's quite affordable for a Secret Rare. Okay, and that's where the increases end, everything else is a decrease, so let's look at the biggest decreases. And it is Manga Boa down $473, still over $1,000, so Manga Boa still a lot of value. A lot more expensive than like Manga Soga King, Manga Sabo, so yeah, just by virtue of being a Boa card, I guess. Treasure Rare Law dropped like almost half in value, $46 down, that is a pretty big hit. A lot of people are iffy on the treasure rare art. They seem to not like the Nami or this law one, so that could be why. And maybe it's a lot more common to get than people were expecting. Monkey D Dragon Leader drops significantly 41% or $41, 67%. So over half its value gone. SP kit also down 41 bucks. SP Nami, Onami went down 41 bucks. So SP cards losing quite a big chunk in value. But Onami is still quite expensive, 123. Then we have Luchi. Ultra leader went down 40 bucks, so 112 to 72. He's under 100 now if you want to pick him up. And then more SP cards. Vega Punk also down $29. Bonnie leader down 28. Boa leader down 27. So they're both sub 100 now too. Ultra Sabo, Secret Rare, down 23 bucks. Yeah, everything is hefty, hefty decreases, but that's to be expected. Because, yeah, as always, people hype up release prices, and then once it settles it settles quite significantly so i'm gonna have to assume that the prices starting from now forward are more of the like normalized actual prices so we'd be interested to see how these prices change in the next period or so when do you guys like to see updates for this i could do it like a week later two weeks later a month later i'm not too sure what cadence i should do it at but yeah let me know 
All right, enough of 07. Let's take a look at the expected value of an 07 box to see if it's worth it to pick it up. So I have that in this tab here. I do the same calculation for 06 and EB01. So in 07, if I took a look at all the SRs and SPs and alt arts, I calculate the probability of them appearing in the different variations of boxes you can get. And then I base that off of their market price. And then with that probability, I calculate like how much a box would be on average. I'm using the pull rates of OP06. I have not been able to verify the official pull rates of 07, but I'm just going to use 06 as like a close enough estimation. I'm pretty sure it's mostly the same, right? Where you can get like a double alt art box, an alt art secret rare box, a SP secret rare alt art box, a leader secret rare alt art box, a leader alt art alt art box, and then I calculate the weighted average after that. I've been able to personally confirm the alt art secret rare SP box because I got two of those and then I got a leader secret rare alt art box. So these two I'm confident are actual variations of boxes you can get. But yeah, if you take a look at these calculations, the average value of an alt art alt art box is 72 bucks. That is extremely low. That's the lowest value kind of box you could get. So sorry if you got that. Up next is the alt art secret rare box. So if you got either Sabo or Ace, and then an alt art in your box. On average, you'll make 73 bucks from your box if you sold the uh, big hits. And then you'd want the uh, ace instead of the Sabo, right? Because ace costs more. Where's that guy at? Here he is. So yeah, ace 18 bucks on average. And then Sabo would be 854. If I'm calculating their average price. Their actual price is, is 37 and then 17 here. And then the next best kind of box you could get would be a leader box. They're pretty much the same. 125-ish each. Whether you get two alt arts or alt art secret rare. And then the best kind of box you can get is an SP card box, actually, SP rare with an alt art and a secret rare at 134 on average. And I do believe the most expensive SP card is Onami. Yep, 123 here. Gives you an expected value of $20. And the worst one you can get is Okiku. Unfortunately, Okiku, you're only $24. But yeah, if you get Onami or Doflamingo, it seems you're golden. You'll get the most value out of your SP rare box. And then for the weighted average, how I calculate that is based on a case, you get 12 booster boxes. There's like a, actually a seeded distribution of these variations of boxes you can get in one case where like the double alt art and the ultra secret rare are more common to get. And then the SP or leader boxes, you have, you have less of a chance to get them. And I'm using the 06 case rates. If I apply 06 logic to 07, the average price of an OP07 box is actually a hundred dollars that is shockingly cheap there's not too much value in 07 i guess now if we take a look at tcg player how much a booster box is the lowest listed booster box you could get on tcg player is 125 dollars with eight dollars shipping so yeah uh on average you're probably not gonna get your money's worth if you buy a sealed box if it was close enough like if it was within 10 bucks maybe i would consider getting a box and just paying that 10 extra dollar premium for like the chance to gamble at getting something big, right? That doesn't seem worth it in this case with the $20 difference between the expected value and then the lowest listed box plus shipping. Shipping makes it 132, 133. So yeah, I would not recommend getting a booster box. I would just buy singles. And then the highest variant box you could get being only 134, that's pretty much the price that you're paying for the box. So you're paying 130 something with the chance to not get the best kind of box you can get, right? Because this is one of the rare variations of booster boxes you can get. Totally does not seem worth it to me. You're more often than likely going to get one of these 72 value boxes. And there's also that factor of you're buying a booster box from potentially a case that already had the big hits already like pulled from it. There are scummy shops that like to open booster boxes. And if they hit like their SP or their leader boxes, they'll sell the remainder of the case out like that and this is just due to the nature of the cases being kind of like preceded that you can tell once you pull all the good stuff the remaining boxes are going to be like crap and unfortunately some places like to sell those kind of booster boxes so the odds are like really stacked against you so unless you can buy a case yourself a whole case or split with people that you trust or you have a reputable seller a store that you know doesn't do that kind of stuff that's even less reason to buy a booster box over TCG player or anything like that. In fact, we can take a look at 06 real quick. Yeah, 07 is less valuable than 06. The weighted average of an 06 box is 113. 
EP01 is sitting at $97, so yeah, honestly, OP07 seems to be like the worst value so far. That's not to say there aren't any good cards in the set, there's a lot of good cards that help a lot of decks out, so because of that, it feels like a really good idea to just buy singles instead, because you don't need everything, especially with the chance to like <laughs> lose a lot. If you get a $72 box, that's like almost half the value lost from buying this 133-ish total booster box on TCG Player. So yeah, that's my recommendation. And if these rates are wrong, do let me know in the comments. I can correct it. I can do an updated video, no problem. And yeah, that's all I wanted to go over for this market watch. I wanted to keep it short, get the relevant information. We went over non-OP07 cards. We went over OP07 cards. We, we calculated the value of an OP07 booster box. So if you like this kind of video, let me know in the comments. Leave a thumbs up, subscribe. If you want access to this dashboard, to this chart for the values and stuff, you can get access if you're a Marketeer patron on my Patreon. So check that out. I'll have it linked in the description, everything like that. And again, let me know what cadence you'd like to see these market review videos in. I think every week might be too much because the prices aren't going to change too much. So let me know what makes sense for you. I'll cater to what you guys want. And yeah, thanks for watching. Bye. Cardi Kaizoku.